Hi everyone, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to show you how to use a Raspberry Pi like this one and a GPS module to get precise date and time from the GPS satellites and synchronize data on your server and also on your network. But before we start, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel. It helps YouTube understand that you like the content and also helps growing the channel. Press the like button and the bell button in order to get notifications about all the videos I'll be publishing. Now, let's do it. Okay, for this project I needed to have a new GPS receiver with uh, some specific requirements and it means having a USART communication port and also PPS signal. So the, the signal that uh, every second determines that the clock is being uh, distributed or being received from the, the, the GPS module and the satellites. Okay, so I, I found it on AliExpress, uh, fairly uh, cheap for a project like this. And I, I also needed uh, an external antenna. In this case, as you can see, it's a, a patch antenna a ceramic patch antenna with three meters cable length and an SMA uh, RF connector that uh, meets or fits the correctly the, the GPS module. Also very cheap. Now let me show you how to install the GPS with the Raspberry Pi board. As you can see here, we have the pin header and let's check the pin out. I need pin two or four for five volts also need pin 6 for ground, the reference voltage. I also need pin 8, which is the USART transmit pin for the GPS module and pin 10, which is the receiving uh, pin from the module. And finally, I need pin 12, which will be used as a digital input to receive the PPS signal from the GPS module. Okay, now uh, back to the board. Let's have a brief look at the GPS model. You can see the VCC, which is 5 volts, the ground, the transmit and the receive, and finally the PPS signal. Be careful because you need to connect the transmit from the Raspberry Pi to the receive on the GPS model and the receive to the transmit. So don't make any mistake connecting VCC, ground, transmit or receive signals. So let's start by connecting the first cable. The pin header is not always very friendly. So, okay, it's now connected. I'm connecting first the main voltage. Let's look at the pinout again, so you can see what I am doing. I already connected the VCC pin. Now let's connect the purple one, which is ground. There we go, ground is already connected. Now moving on, let's connect the next pin which is the grey, okay? And the grey is transmit from the module, so it will be connected to the receive pin on the Raspberry Pi pin header. Okay, it's now connected. So moving on to the next one which is the white let me connect it, the receiver, and finally I have the PPS pin to connect. So let's connect it to pin 12, which will be GPIO 18, okay? Okay, and it's connected. So we have completed connecting all the pins so we can have our GPS module working and using Raspberry Pi power. Be careful about that because you need to make sure you have enough power to uh, this module, otherwise it might get unstable. As you can see here, this is a Neo 8. You can see here also the RF connector. Let me show you the antenna. This is the patch antenna I bought from AliExpress. And here is the male SMA connector. So let's connect both so we can have 
signals. Okay. Make sure it's tight because these signals are very, very small, sensitive. So you need to make sure you have a good connection. Okay, moving on. Let's start by configure our Raspberry Pi. We need to make sure the Raspberry Pi has the necessary configuration on pin 18, GPIO 18, so we can have the signals being received. So we are adding a new overlay to our bootloader, stating that we don't want Bluetooth. This is because we don't want any a misconfiguration regarding the uh, user port. We also want uh, to enable PPS. This tells the operating system that we want to inject uh, the PPS signal in our kernel, in our system clock. And we also want pin 18. And don't make this mistake. Pin 18 is the GPIO, okay? And pin 12 is the number inside the pin header okay configuration is done so let's uh, reboot and move on now it's time to run the raspy config tool enter the interface options and serial port here you need to guarantee that the login is not enabled and then you want the serial hardware interface activated okay so choose yes and there we go so let's go back to the main menu and we can now exit the tool so moving on now we want to reboot again because we need this to be activated from boot so we can proceed okay back again let's start by installing python 3 gps package and python 3 serial Okay, it's already installing. Let's wait a little bit until it finishes. And that's it. Okay, let's move on. Next, now we need to install GPS daemon so we can have our GPS signals being received and taken care. Let's also wait until it installs properly. Should be in a minute. These packages are all roughly small okay and it's now complete moving on next step let's configure gps daemon you see that in uh, etc default folder you have the gpsd file let's configure our device in this case is slash dev slash tty ama0 and let's put through in the start daemon variable so we can have it's starting from boot. You can restart the service. Okay, systemctl restart gpsd dot service. And you can check the status to confirm that GPS daemon is working properly. We need some more information, of course, but you as you can see, daemon is already working. So let's install crony. This service will give us the PPS functionality. Let's install it. Also a very small uh, package should be completed. OK, and let's edit the gpsd.conf inside the crony uh, configuration folder. Here I'll add a new configuration to tell crony that the reference clock called PPS will be coming from slash dev slash PPS zero. Uh, we will be locking the NMEA signals from the GPS and the ID PPS will be used with a precision uh, of one elevated minus seven. And we want to make logs from, from these reference clocks in order to see them working properly I will restart Crony. And now I will make a short 
a script in order to configure our GPS module. These uh, UBlox modules are very uh, complete. They have lots of features. They can receive signals from different satellite constellations. So uh, with this tool, UBEX tool, I'm uh, activating the NMEA uh, protocol, okay? I'm enabling Galileo satellite constellation. I am disabling the binary data, the ECEF and raw data and NED also. So we don't have too much information coming from the GPS. In fact, we want text. And then the save and config uh, will be used to save and make it default. And the last line called boot will mean uh, factory uh, default in terms of um, information from the satellites. So we need to download from the satellites the ephemerid and we will have 30 seconds of uh, output from the GPS to see if everything is working properly. So I'm giving uh, execution permissions to the script and then as you can see we have the X which means the user can execute this script. So let's execute the script to see if it works properly. I'll be configuring the GPS receiver. You already see lots of data uh, coming from the, the GPS module. So it might take uh, some time uh, depending on where you put the antenna. So it's very important that you put the antenna outdoor because as you can see, I have no signal. GPS satellite scene zero, used zero. As soon as you put the antenna outdoors, you might need to wait a few minutes. In some cases, half an hour, one hour, it really depends where uh, the GPS satellites are, where the antenna is, how strong are the signals and uh, how, how long it takes to download completely the ephemerid. So it's like a database from the satellite so we can make local calculations. So I already have satellite signals and I, am, I have uh, time and date, okay? So let's uh, watch the PPS uh, zero uh, data in real time. We expect to have one new uh, date set every second. As you can see, we are updating system uh, date and clock with, uh, with these timestamps you, you can see here. It's very important that you confirm this. So let's install this PPS tool a package that can uh, give you also some uh, similar information about uh, the PPS mechanism. After you install it, you can call uh, the, the command PPS test referring to the device PPS zero. And as you can see, the source uh, is activated, is running properly. So you can have and, and see uh, timestamps. I've used my oscilloscope so I, I, I could show you the, the, the impulses, okay? These are electrical impulses that are entering pin 18, so uh, GPIO 18, every second. As you can see uh, at the bottom left uh, corner of the screen, the, the delta uh, is in fact one second, precisely one second, and it will be used by the operating system to calibrate time uh, being received uh, from the NMEA uh, uh, packages, okay? So as you can see here, using Chrony-C, uh, the PPS is the one that I'm uh, using to um, synchronize clock and the precision of this type of uh, signal is uh, below uh, a microsecond. So in this case, I have 637 nanoseconds of uh, uh, precision, okay, delay. Uh, receiving it so it's much much better comparing to uh, for example NTP uh, signals uh, or packages received from the internet okay using the same common but uh, with parameter tracking let's have a look at the details of the clock being received as you can see uh, calculation is telling me that I have a uh, uh, 
precision of 2.16 ppm okay uh, you can see the offset uh, very small offsets because we are updating system clock every second with the pps signal okay it, it gives us a very very uh, big precision on this uh, system clock set now let's move on I'm, I want to show you the logs so you, if you use tail and refer to the Varlog uh, Crony uh, ref clocks dot log you can see that these clocks are being saved in the log so you can uh, look at them later if required okay you can disable this feature uh, if everything is already working properly so I have a date now in my system so what we need to do next is to use somehow uh, this uh, feature to set clocks in the network so I'm adding this directive allowing any computer inside the local network 192.168.10/24 and I'm restarting crony in order to activate this feature from this point after I restart service I can show you that port 123 is already activated so I need to uh, show listening ports on UDP protocol 123 there we go uh, this uh, shows us that the service is listening so I can uh, try to configure client so my not network is very simple you can see the Raspberry Pi inside the local network with the GPS module and connecting to the same switch I have an Ubuntu 22.04 LTS desktop being used as a client so the main purpose is to configure the client to use NTP server from the Raspberry Pi. So let's proceed. I'm going to show you where we can do that. So if you go to the etc systemd folder, you have access to the configuration of the systemd timesync D daemon. So that's the file I'm going to open in my text editor nano timesyncd.conf and here using the ntp directive you can put 192.168.1.96 which is the ntp server uh, running with crony on the raspberry pi so let's restart the service and before i press enter let me open a new window and in this new terminal window I will run TCP dump so we can have a look at the network traffic uh, filtering by NTP protocol so my filter will be port 123 let's see what we can catch from the network now let me just adjust the window so you can see it properly after I press enter, I should contact server and get my date. So as you can see, I already got some uh, packages. This is the answer from the server. So IP ending with 96 is the Raspberry Pi and is telling me uh, the new date. So I can set clock and date in my uh, Ubuntu. So you can see my own uh, IP address ending with 143. This is a Stratum 1 server because it does not depend on any other server. So it's on top of the hierarchy and its reference ID is PPS like we saw previously uh, with uh, crony uh, C commands. Okay, so we have made our configuration date is set and as you can see it's quite simple to set our dates using a gps with pps signal on a very small computer which is the raspberry pi and have very high precision with all the clocks that you distribute inside your local network and that's all for now press like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel Press the bell button if you want to get notifications about all the videos I'll be publishing. That's all for now. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.